So, hey, I want to get into the intentional dad blueprint because like I told you before the show, we talk about intentionality all the time on this show. It's a word that is a common thread on, on almost every episode we've had so far. And when I saw that you had put in an entire blueprint, I said, you know what, should I just, should I just go after the blueprint first or should I talk with him first? I couldn't decide. So I decided to speak with you first. So give me just a little bit of a summary of what the blueprint can offer. Yeah. So about a year ago, I launched within my coaching practice something called the intentional dad blueprint, because as I look around and see all these things in the world, I realize if we can solve some of the issues with men, how many, how many problems in this world would be gone, right? A lot of them. So we're kind of the issue, but the reality is I, (laughs) I can only fix, I mean, I can't fix kids. I can't fix people who are in their nineties. So I'm like, who can I focus on? Dads, people who can relate to myself. We're in the same process. So the intentional dad blueprint is just about dads leveling up so they can be better and form a better, closer bond with their children. Therefore, they can lead their children for the next legacy. The idea is to create that ripple effect of stronger leadership within the family, which I hope will continue for generations. See, one misconception is people jump into my blueprint and they think I have sort of the the silver bullet for making your kids not whine and for not yelling at your kids and and different things like that. But the reality is parenting is called parenting because it's about the parent, not about the kid. And when people would realize that it's about them and not their child, it should set them free. We can go deeper into that later, but just understand that when you think of parenting, it's about you, not about how many softball games you want to play. But it's about you as a person and developing into a in developing better. And that will roll over into your family. Okay. Okay. So the premise is we develop as parents to be better developers for our children. Is that is that kind of what I'm hearing? Well, sort of. So when think about the last time you got frustrated with your child. Is there any, any recent times? Sure. Um, he's at that stage where, he, uh, well, we're getting better at this. He, I think he's at the, a butt, at the butt end of this, but he shows outrage when he doesn't get what he wants. And, and, that, and that makes me frustrated because, you know, I've spoken with him about how to get what he wants. And we and kind of tried to help him uh, clear up what he wants. But sometimes he can't help it. He's two and a half. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's definitely those age related actions that people just have to walk through and they have to get through it. But let's take this for, take the example. So the frustration is that he's mad because he doesn't get what you want. And you've told him before, here's how you're supposed to act. And he doesn't do it. Right. So most frustrations stem from unmet expectations. Think about it. Every time you're frustrated is because you had a certain expectation. It didn't get met. And now you're irritated. So step one is what are my expectations? Are they realistic? And why am I putting these expectations on other people? This is not just for your children. It can go for your spouse, everything. Think about the last time you came home and you were hoping the dishes were done. Let's say, I don't know. I'm not trying to be sexist. I'm just saying like it's summer. My wife's a teacher. She's home all summer and she's really good about just sort of taking that extra time and keeping the house picked up. But let's say one day I came home and I was hoping they were done and it was just a disaster. Well, immediately I might be a little bit irritated because now I'm thinking, now I have to do it. Woe is me. I worked all day. I didn't even ask how her day was. I just decided to be irritated, assuming they were free all day. The kid could have been throwing up and I didn't know about it because she was letting me let me do work. But I came home, my expectation in my head was dishes would be done, house is smelling beautiful, and we can all go outside and throw a ball. But I come home, it's unmet expectations, instantly frustrated. Same with our children. We expect them to behave a certain way. It doesn't happen. Now we're frustrated. So then the next step is, why are you frustrated with it? If you know he's two or two and a half, 
and this is a common attitude within two and a half year olds, why are we frustrated? You have to ask yourself, is it because of how I look? Is it because how that makes me feel as a dad, which is typically the issue is I must not be as good of a parent as I thought because my kid is throwing a fit. Happens in the store. Why is it that parents are okay with kids throwing fits at home, but in the store, we just get outraged because why? We're embarrassed, right? How it makes us look from everybody else. So it's really about our egos. Our egos say we should be perfect out, outside the house, inside the house. It's a little more controlled. And so I start with, with that on everything. It's all about our egos. What are the expectations we're putting out there? And then from there, it's understanding like what, how our, what our children model is not, well, we know it's a reflection of ourselves. But what do we do when our parent, our kids do something incorrect? If we know it's a reflection of us, are we trying to figure out what, how we are teaching that to them and how we can fix it ourselves? Or are we immediately trying to band-aid that and fix it on our kid? So if my son, my son's name is Andrew. He's 12. He's great. I'm really proud of him. He's not perfect. He's a 12-year-old. He's going into his teenage years, whatever. If he has a little attitude one day, we definitely talk about it. But at the same time, if he decides to bark back, or let's say he gets mad and just yells. He's not really a yeller. But let's say he gets mad and he screams at me. I can get mad at him and scream back and say, that's not how you talk to your dad. <laughs> or I can calm down, separate, understand that he's probably screaming at me because that's how I've reacted in the past. Right? And so instead of just getting mad at him about yelling at me, maybe I should reflect and think, what is it I'm doing that's causing him to, un to learn that trait? I'm probably raging on people when I get frustrated. Or maybe I'm barking at him when I'm frustrated with him instead of talking with him in a calm adult to adult sort of tone. So that's what I mean by parenting is about parenting because it's about yourself. It's not, it's not about being selfish. It's about understanding that your child is sort of a mirror. And if you use it properly, then it can be used for your own self-awakening. What a wonderful description there, man. I, I, as you were going through, I was like, truth, truth, truth in my head. So I, I, I imagine that's going to be invaluable for some folks out there that haven't heard that before and don't understand that, you know, just like you just said, your kids are a mirror of yourself. And I am obviously not perfect either. Nobody is, but I'm working every single day to try to uh, be the best example just like you said, uh, that's what leadership is. The the best possible example for my son that I can possibly be. And man, sometimes it's rough because you look at your day and you're like, man, I acted badly or I behaved badly or, you know, whatever I did badly. And you and you feel bad about it, of course. But I, I think, you know, the struggle is, is a good thing to go through because you won't want to feel that way every day. You know what I mean? You're going to want to improve. So, man, that's awesome. 